in today's video, I am going to be cleaning these guys. They've gotten a little dirty because the yard next door did a little cleanup. So I got to make sure these guys are getting the most amount of solar, sun, and efficiency that they can get. Let's get into it. So I have about what, 13, 14, 15 security cameras around my house. And that's really good because of security, but also something that it lets me uh, know about is whenever there are people around, such as, as workers maybe next door doing some work, some maintenance on the, the lawn or whatever. And by getting that alert, I know that I'm gonna need to come next door to the, uh, solar panels and clean them off because of the dust, the dirt, the debris. See this right here? This is bad. This is really bad for these panels. These panels right here with the white lines, these were installed back in 2010. And these are what are called, um, they're, they're Kyoceras, but they are on a string inverter, right? So a string inverter, which is what these guys are, it's where you take multiple solar panels and you run them into a string inverter and then that inverter takes the solar power and converts it into power that will be usable by my home. The disadvantage of a string inverter, especially these older ones, is that I believe I've got 10 panels on one inverter and multiple inverters, but if any of these get any shade or any debris like this, it reduces that panel down to let's just say that little small thing instead of it producing a hundred percent it now will produce and i'm going to make up a number 50 percent if there was maybe more stuff on it you can see the the dust on this i'll clean that off now what happens on the string inverter the old ones is that if one is reduced down to 50 percent the entire row of panels that is on that one string will be reduced down to 50% as well. So the, the idea is to always keep the, the panels clean so that you reduce the, the whole string from coming down versus the, the newer panels that I had installed right over here back in um, 2000, I don't know, just a few years ago the all black ones, these are the, the LGs. And these guys right here, they have, let me see if I can see it. They have, there it is. They have micro inverters. And what those micro inverters do, one, they're more efficient, but they actually do the conversion on the back of the panel instead of doing it at the inverter. And one of the advantages of the micro inverter is that if this panel right here is shaded or has something wrong with it, only this panel right here will be affected and none of the other panels will uh, start reducing what they should be doing just because this one panel is having an issue or it's shaded or it's dirty. So in any event, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull my water hose up here and something I've done a lot of research. Some people say to use some sort of cleaning solution. Some people say just to use water and what I've been doing, I've done both. And what I've been doing lately is just water. So let's do that right now. Before doing the water, I'm gonna see if I can just get this piece right here off the panel. This is a brush that I got back in the day whenever someone told me that I needed to use like soap and and um, uh, this, what was it? Windshield wiper fluid. So there we go. I got it off and now the water should just run this right off and this should not be an issue i don't see any anything else so i'll get the water that should do the rest it's also good to come up here and make sure that there are no shades on the panels so this guy right here i have to watch and keep trimmed back some of these bushes up here i have to keep trimmed and then you got stuff like this with spider webs but anyway 
This is uh, doing this with one hand, so let's see how well I can do this. And this is just how easy it is. I mean, you can see just how dirty it can get just from like the neighbors or whatever next door uh, doing some, some yard work. I have thought about creating some sort of little um, like irrigation system and that irrigation system, you know, to kind of be all around the solar panels. And all I got to do is just come out here, flip it on and it will automatically, you know, just kind of turn on and clean these guys off just like my sprinkler system does every few days around the yard. But it just seems like an extra expense that I'm not wanting to do. Plus, um, at some point, if, you know, crypto starts going back up again, I wanted to add more panels. You know, I'm running about a 15K system here, and I would love to get it up to, I think, residential. The max that we can have here where I'm at is 30K. And I would love to be able to put in a total of 30K and, you know, just increase the farm and, again, just kind of become independent for my energy needs, which I am right now, but, but also be able to expand the farm so that even if we're in a market like we are right now, I can always keep those miners on 100%. Because of the market condition that's going on right now, I mean, I actually turned all of my rigs off. I've been, I've been cleaning them I'll have a, some videos coming out of some of the cleaning that I'm doing with these guys. And I'm, what I've noticed is how much, how much I'm, I'm making in an actual solar. Oh, I got a kink in the line. Let me be back. Okay. We're back. Anyway, I've noticed how much solar I'm producing now that I've added these six Tesla power walls. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't actually seen if I turn crypto off and I just have my, my normal power usage, such as my home, my pool, and also, you know, uh, charging our cars, we have two Teslas. What, how negative will I be every month? You know, it's almost like you're mining solar, you know, with the solar panels and the, and the Tesla power walls. And I'm on a program to where I'm on the EV TOU plan with my power company. And what that means is that whenever I produce solar, my home is going to use that solar. If I overproduce solar, my Tesla power walls are going to store that solar. When my Tesla power walls are full, then it will sell that extra solar, that excess solar back to the grid. Now, the advantages of, of this is that I'm on the, uh, uh, I'm, I'm on like a three-tiered system, time of use plan, TOU plan. And that tier is like from midnight until 6 a.m. It's 10 cents from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. It's 40 cents from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m. It's 64 cents. So it gets crazy expensive depending on the time of day now my time of use plan is set up so that if i am overproducing solar then my power company will actually buy my excess solar from me at the same price so if i'm buying power from them at 64 cents then I can also be selling to them at 64 cents, which is exactly what I do. What this will allow me to do is kind of, and, and then what they do is they give me a credit that's on my bill. And then once a year, you can do something called true up. And that means that any excess that you have or created for the past year, you can ask for a check in that amount. Now, I've read a lot of forums and stuff about, you know, doing what's called the true up where you get paid out for your excess solar. And I've, I've read up on, on SDG and E as well. And it seems like they don't pay you for the, 
the same amount as what uh, the credit is. So if you do take the payout, then you would be getting it at wholesale price, which is substantially lower. So what I might do is just kind of store and bank some, and then in February when my true up comes about, actually do a, a true up paycheck just to see how much they are paying at this, and it changes every year. So I know this year is gonna be different from next year, and it's different from last year, and it just is what it is, but I'd like to see what, what it would be because my goodness, if you could just sit here and mine power, because power's not going anywhere, and you can get paid these ridiculous rates, then maybe it makes sense to add a substantial amount of solar panels and power walls and just continue to sell power back to the grid. Any event, you can see I've been out here for, what, less than 15 minutes, and these guys are shiny and clean. And see, they've already dried over there. So, shiny and clean and all good, so... We're good to go. Another thing that I'll do whenever I'm up here cleaning the panels, which is maybe once every three to six months, is I'll make sure that I don't have any weeds or whatever popping up like this. This isn't this isn't bad because I'm southbound and so it's the sun's coming up from way up here. This isn't whatever. So I'll take care of that another time. Or you know what? I'm already here. I'll take care of it now. Whenever I'm done up here i will walk around and make sure that nothing was left on the solar panels because even some little guy like this right here that's bad it's bad for these string inverters or these panels that's on these string inverters because again that could have significantly reduced that panel and the whole row that it's on they are now dry producing like crazy and doing their thing Normally, you know, I can just look at my app and I know what these guys are producing. So if I need to come up here and clean them or see what's going on, I can do that. But again, because I've got security cameras around my house, I, uh, I noticed that they were cleaning next door. I know that whenever they do things next door, it creates a lot of debris and dust and that I just want to go on ahead and come up here and clean these guys. So we're clean and ready to produce power. Cleaning my solar panels, it's pretty easy. They're ground mounted behind my house, pull a water hose up there, 15 minutes later, it's done. Here, I'm just uh, showing you on my Tesla app that solar panels, they're producing. You know, it's up to 15K. That's at the height of the day. We're around 11 a.m. right now in uh, California. So between 11.30 to 1, that's when it, it gets all the way up to 15K, and then it starts to come down um, until like 5 or 6. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.